Hi, this is Brian. Today we're back at Adam's garage. Adam is with me, George is with me, and today we're going to put the bolster in George's 1944H. And the other videos I explained the bolster, the bearing, and the bushing that we're going to use. And today now we'll go through the process of putting the bolster back in. And as George made clear in one of the previous videos, when we talk about working to put the bolster in, that means Adam is going to do 80% of the work. Uh huh. <laughs> First, I'll start with just an overview of how we remove the bolster. The bolster's already out, you've seen it in previous videos. Step one is you're going to have to loosen up this nut that's on top of the bolster shaft. It's about an inch and a half. Just while the tractor's on the ground, loosen up this nut. Don't take it off. And the reason you're not going to take it off is later on you have to give the shaft quite a thump with a big hammer to get the shaft loose from the gear because that's a tapered fit. So just loosen up the nut while the tractor has weight on the bolster. Then we jack the tractor up. We grabbed it from the implement attachment points with the gantry crane and just lifted it up so the front tires were about a half inch off the ground. The tires are still sitting there. We elected to leave the pedestal assembly on. You can kind of see it in there. I suppose you could take the tires off too if you wanted to. That would lighten things up. But we have just packed the wheel bearings in these wheels not too long ago. So we elected to leave the wheels on. And there is enough room to get the socket in there and the wrench to remove the bolts from the pedestal assembly to the bolster shaft. Just a side note, you can see the tank is being dried. It's Minnesota and it's cold out. We put the first stage of the cleaner in the tank and now we have to dry it. But that's, I digress. Back to the tractor. After we jacked it up, we have it sitting on jack stands, one on both sides, on the frame. Of course, the tractor's in gear. Of course, the parking brake is set. And of course, we have both wheels chalked. George feels that the tractor is very safe to work on. So once it's jacked up, we remove the four bolts. And let me show you what it takes to remove the bolts. Here are the four bolts that need to be removed, nuts and bolts that need to be removed to separate the pedestal, the front wheel pedestal from the bolster shaft. The bolts take a 7 8 wrench, and yes, you can get a wrench up in between the bolster and the superstructure, the cast iron superstructure of the tractor. Is it a tight fit? Yes it is, but you can get a wrench up there. And then you can get a socket, a 15-16 socket, onto these nuts. Now these nuts will be facing down towards the ground and you kind of have to reach up in between the tires. That'd be one reason why it'd probably be easier if you took the tires off. But it can be done. There's enough room to get in there with the tires on. Remember, this bolt is special. It has a crown on him. And that crown will go on the upper right-hand side of the bolster when we put it back together. And that crown then will hit castings, the casting, and it limits how far the wheels can be turned. And it really wasn't difficult getting these four nuts and bolts off. I do want to mention one thing, though, about the front wheel assembly. Here's the one safety tip that I'm going to talk about. When we removed this front pedestal and I pushed it back, it was a little bit heavier than I thought it was. And the cast iron piece fell down to the ground quite fast. Not so much that it broke or anything like that, but it almost hit my toes. So if you're separating this thing like we did, leaving everything together, it's heavy. Beware. Now let's talk about extracting the bushings. If you watched Kenny Kissel's video, or Squatch's video, when they took the bolster shaft out, this bottom bushing came with it. That's probably uh, lucky if that happens. 
On this particular tractor, George's, the bushing was still stuck in the, the pedestal, or the bolster, I should have said. And we did have to hit it a little bit with a punch to get it to come out. But it was pretty easy. So the bottom one, which is the bigger of the two, came out pretty easy. In some videos, it just fell out. But then there's the top one. The top one's going to fight you. There's the top seal, oil seal, and the top bushing. These guys come out hard. If you go online to places like Yesterday's Tractor, Red Power Magazine, many people have written on various ways to get these out. People have cut them and other things. Do what you feel is best on your tractor. We elected to use hammers and chisels and just kind of did it old school and they came out and they, they will fight you. Now one other thing that I want to add and I'll return back to the tractor. I'm back at the bolster assembly. It's probably impossible to get these bushings out without scratching the bore just a little tiny bit. We tried not to but you're going to. So we used a brake cylinder hone for this top one and just honed it out, honed out the scratches and honed out the the debris and stuff and just cleaned it up. Not so much that we affected the diameter, just enough to shine up the bore. We did that with a brake cylinder hone and a regular cylinder hone for this one. Okay, that concludes how we got the bolster out. It was pretty easy. You can do it on your tractor as well. And now Oh, and this concludes how we got the bushing bearings out. This one's easy. This guy's going to fight you. But you can win. We did. Everybody else does. You can too. Now we're ready to put the bushing bearings back in. We're going to start with the bottom one. And Adam's going to explain the process that he wishes to use. Okay, here's Adam's plan on how we're going to put this bottom bushing in. We're going to press it in with the bolster shaft. And we're going to use the new bolster shaft because this edge is so nice and square. The old bolster shaft is just too worn out. And of course, he has the oil hole pointed straight forward. Oops, watch the camera here. See there, he's actually bringing the bolster shaft back out. He's letting the jack down. We've already pressed the bushing in just a little tiny bit. We're using the bearing and the spacer to set our top height because it will stop against the cast iron superstructure and that will place our bear bushing bearing where it needs to be. Okay, let's give this a try. And George's job is he's going to be guiding it in. He's looking right down there. We do not have the top bearing in yet. So the two are going to work together. I'm going to step back. You want me to pump the jack? And in it goes. The jack worked pretty good. But it did require a little bit of tapping as well. We used a small hammer and we had a hit on the bottom of the pedestal to assist. But in no time at all, I think it's there. The, the, the shaft is in and the bushing was in. It didn't fight us very hard at all. We will remove the bolster now and work on the upper shaft. And when we remove this bolster, we'll also double check to make sure that the grease port is lined up. Here's a close-up of the bushing inside the bottom bore, and it lines up with the old marks. And Adam is pumping grease through, actually, just to prove that it's still lined up. Perfect. This bottom bushing has been installed. Look at there, the grease came out. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Yes, it is. Okay, the bottom one is in. It didn't give us too much of a fight. Now, the top ones. Okay, Adam, tell us the process that you're going to use to put this seal in place. 
Well, we have the seal and I have some washers that fit just perfectly just under the seal diameter. And you put some grease in to keep the spring in place so the springs don't come out. Mm -hmm. And we'll use some all thread. And we'll put this in there with the seal on there and pull it up, tighten this washer down against this top bolster face here. Okay, let me get that on there. Against, against this face and we'll okay. pull the seal right into its position. And it has a positive stop inside so we'll know when to stop. So I'll sit on there like that. And I see you taped up the threaded rod as to not mar up the seal. That's a good idea. All right, what do you think, George? Do you approve? 100%. 100% says George. So, Adam, get to it. It would be very difficult to show that seal because it's way up in this bolster. <laughs> Picture of Adam's ear. It's hard. It's even hard for him to see. I think it kind of has to go by feel. Adam will get it lined up just right. He'll get the tension just right, and he'll gently pull it up in. But it's going to be hard to show, so I'm going to stop the video right now of the pulling of the seal. But you can tell by looking at this it's going to work, and it'll be real easy to pull it up. And I'm pretty sure this is how they might have done it in the factory. I should get a quick shot of the serial number. And in no time at all, Adam had that seal pulled up into position. Yep. It didn't fight us at all. Especially with the limbs, the kind of George said all you need is three hands. Actually, what it took is one hand working and two hands watching. <laughs> Meanwhile, the tank is drying out. They stuck a heat gun in there. Stage one of that stuff, I think which is detergent, was in the tank and it's just drying out on top of the wheel pedestal in the corner. Well look, I could put the camera into selfie mode here and shine straight up the bolster so the camera is looking towards the ceiling now and you can see that seal in place. I'll pause here for a second so you get a good look of the seal. It worked real good to pull it into place. We had no problems at all. Well, now it's time to put the upper bushing in. So, Adam, what's your plan? How are you going to get this bushing in? Last night I turned a chunk of aluminum to the inside diameter with just a little bit of room and a nice square shoulder. Hopefully use that as a driver. That's no problem, that's going right in. It'll be in in no time at all. This is the machine that's making that possible. But you wouldn't have to do it this way. You could use that same threaded rod to pull it in. Gee, that was easy. Well, gang, what's next? Adam. And George is reading the instructions I'm for the, the tank. Library. George is in the library. Adam is putting the bolts in the shaft. Uh, I probably got a little bit of paint in those holes, huh? I painted those. The shaft didn't come painted, of course not. But putting these bolts in will save us a few minutes later. It's possible to get these bolts in when the shaft is in, but it's easier to do it now. And then we'll go back to the bolster and we'll just lift it in place. And then George will put the gear and the nut on. Not tight, just enough to hold it. And then we'll put the pedestal assembly on. I was supposed to have had the bolt shined up, but I didn't get around to it. So now George has to do it. We are going to lubricate the shaft and the bushings up ahead of time. Adam is busy working on that. George has the bolts shined up real nice. And the bolt with the crown is in the upper front right side. But of course we can turn the shaft when it's done too. But we're still trying to put it together right. Adam's pre-lubing everything. And the shaft's going to go in here in just a second. Okay, here it goes. Adam is lifting the shaft into position. George is standing by. 
in it goes through the seal up and into place George is this going to drop the gear on just enough to so we can get the nut on to grab this thing you make it sound so easy mm -hmm. okay George has the gear on it just fell right into place we're just going to put the nut on with a few threads okay. just enough so Adam can okay. let go there you see I fell down like that without that nut on the whole wow. bolster would have fallen that right out slid in there nice mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to make ready to move the front pedestal back into position. Looks like we'll have to move the tank.